Hi everyone! Uh, so this video I'm going to be talking about how I reviewed my practice exams for the MCAT. Um, I don't have a ton of detail to give but I'll tell you guys how I did it. Um, I, you know, everyone will tell you that reviewing your practice exams is really important to properly study for the MCAT because if you just take your practice exams but you never review them then you don't really know what you're doing wrong and what you need to improve on. So with that being said, um, yeah, we'll just get into it. So basically what I would do is usually it'd be the day after or even the next day that I'd end up reviewing the exams, but the sooner you can review them, the better, because then you're still going to remember some details. Like uh, if you're reviewing a question, you can remember if you had just happened to guess the right answer, or you might remember a little bit of your thought process and remember which answers you were considering uh, so that you can kind of help learn from that. So basically what I do is I'd sit down and go through the entire exam, every single question, that's really important as well. You need to review every question, whether you got it right or wrong, because like I kind of mentioned earlier, you might have guessed the answer right just completely by random. And if you don't review that question, then you'll never know that there was a concept that you missed or, or something like that. So basically for every question I would go through, um, for each section, I would, so I would take notes um, on a piece of paper as I was reviewing. It ended up being from a practice exams that each section I would just have a one single sided page of paper I'd take the notes on. I don't have an example with me, but it was nothing special. Um, usually at the top, I would, for each passage, write down how many questions I got correct out of the passage. So like five out of five or, you know, one out of four or whatever it was. So that way I would kind of know which passages I might have just really messed up on because to me that was a bad thing if you miss over half of the questions on a passage or even more than one question on a passage, then clearly you didn't understand the passage. So I wanted to eliminate that. So I, that is something I tracked. And then for the discretes, I'd write down how many I got right out of the total discretes in each section, because you know, they usually come in a few discretes at a time. Um, so that usually be at the top of my paper. And then below that, I would keep a small list of concepts that I might've missed questions about. Um, so anything, if I missed a question that was content related, then I would write just, you know, something about what the content was. And then for the really big concepts that I missed questions on, like things that I know show up a lot, like amino acids or, I don't know, thermodynamics or anything that enzyme types, anything that I'd seen from my practice that was a bigger concept versus if I missed a question on some tiny detail, I'd write it on the shorter list. If it was a big concept, I had a completely separate sheet of paper that I kept a running list on for all of my practice exams. I just kept adding to that list. Um, if concepts repeated that I missed questions on, I'd star them. That way I could see that list for me was kind of the stuff I really wanted to go back and study because I knew those were bigger, more common concepts versus things on the shorter list. It's kind of like if I had time, which let's be honest, I did not have time to review everything I ever missed a concept question on because there's just so much content. Um, so yeah, I'd keep the list of the concepts that I wanted to come back to. Um, and then I'd also usually keep notes. I started doing this later, especially I kept track of why I missed questions. So I usually kind of categorized it as like, if I missed the question because it, because of concept, because I just didn't know something, then I would, you know, I'd kind of have the categories and then tally how many questions I got wrong for each. So if I just missed the concept, that's one reason. And then another reason might be that I second guessed myself. So maybe I had the right answer and then I changed it. Um, Another reason would be if I guessed wrong. So let's say I had, that one kind of could be fall into another category, but I would mark the ones where I had narrowed it down to two answers and I guessed wrong of the two. Uh, and then I guess another reason that happens is you read the question wrong. And that definitely happened to me. And when that happened, that was a red flag, I guess, because there's no reason you should miss a question for reading the question wrong. If you knew the content, you just read it wrong, then you need to make sure you're reading more carefully during the MCAT because those are points that you could have gotten but you might have missed. So I'd keep track of everything like that. Um, like I said, it would usually end up being one side of a piece of paper for each section of the exam without, I mean, I would take notes for cars as well, but I mean that one, yeah, I do cars as well in the same way. I mean that one I could track why I missed the questions and for cars I'd maybe get a little more detailed of I didn't read the question correctly, I didn't understand the passage correctly, I referred to the wrong section of the passage. Things like that, since cars is a little different than the others. Obviously, content's not an issue with cars. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do 
So for each um, exam, I'd end up with two pages front and back with all of my notes. And then usually onto each section, um, at the top of each page, I'd copy over um, what score I ended up getting, what subscore I got on that section, just so I could know and kind of track things. And then I'd also, when I took my prax exams, you know, I'd have scratch paper to simulate test date conditions. And usually I would make a note whenever I finished a section of how much time I had left, whether that's 10 minutes or zero minutes. And I'd usually copy that over as well onto my exam review sheets, just so I could keep track of how my time was progressing. progressing. And that is something that I looked at, um, you know, yeah, there were some sections I pretty consistently had a lot of time left and others where it fluctuated a little more. So it was just good to know what to expect with that, as well as with the scores. Um, yeah, I think that's basically everything that I did to review. Like I said, review is really important. Um, I guess the only other thing to add is, you know, I would always read whatever they wrote um, as their explanation for the test. Depending on which test you're taking, they might have more or less details about why the answer is right, but I'd always read that just to see what they said. And, you know, when you do proper exam review, it will take a long time, but that's how you're going to get the most out of your prep. So, um, I think that's everything. I hope that was helpful, and thank you for listening. Bye.